All right, <clears throat> I want to take a look at something. I actually won this at uh, where I work, a Christmas party that we had. I actually won this tool and another tool, both cordless tools. One's a Milwaukee, Milwaukee multi-tool and then this uh, tool right here at uh, the Christmas party from uh, where I work at uh, Crestline Paving and Excavating. So we're going to take a look at this DeWalt 20 volt max grease gun kit. It's the DCGG 571 Now I have not used this yet. I have charged the battery. The battery's been fully charged, but I wanted to go through this, look at the setup, and uh, do everything prior to getting any grease in it. All right, so we'll look at the shoulder strap first. This attaches to the tool, should you want to carry it that way. And uh, it is fully adjustable. Next up is the charger. It charges the 12 volt to 20 volt max lithium ion batteries. The number DCB115. That charger does come with a six foot cord. Next up is the battery that comes with this. Four amp hour, 20 volt, lithium ion. Now on the front of the battery, you'll see these three areas here. You push it in and hold it, and it gives you the state of charge. That's fully charged. Okay, now here's, you're going to put the fully charged battery into the charger, which is plugged in. Something I noticed with even my other DeWalt's that I have, this battery has not been used. I charged it up. It's been in the house where it's warm. And when I put it on, it is flashing, which indicates that it is charging. Now, I'm not sure why, but I noticed with my other DeWalt batteries, it does the same thing. It'll do that for a little while, even though the battery is fully charged. And it's only been maybe um, three or four days. So, anyways, that's just something I noticed with the Walt with my other ones. So it'll go like that a little bit, and then it'll shut off. But that battery, for all intent purposes, should be fully charged because when it's when it's done, this will be a constant red. The tool does come with documentation. So you can familiarize yourself with the operation. 
and a little information before we go on the uh, motor delivers up to 10,000 maximum PSI to power through clogged grease fittings it has a um, variable speed trigger to control the flow of the grease the high volume pump pushes up to five ounces per minute for high flow applications and up to 16 cartridges per charge with the single DeWalt 20 volt max battery for amp hour that uh, comes with the unit can be expected and uh, hard to access grease fittings are uh, easier to get to with the 42 inch flexible holes it has an air bleeder valve to assist in pumping and at the pump in priming after a cartridge change and the filter prevents dirt and contamination and it has a bright light LED for low light settings this comes with a three-year limited manufacturer warranty all right before we pull it out of the box you'll see how the hose nest inside the case here there's a little slot back there that it sets down into and that way when you want to close this up it stores nicely in fact all the stuff as you saw in the beginning everything will fit in this case as to the case that it comes in it does have a hinge it's not one of those plastic kind that are just molded it is a regular hinge pinned all the way through as you see there this does have a clip for the holes as you're using it and carrying it and when it's not being stored in the box if you're on the job site okay let's take it out of the box close the lid and you'll notice the feet that it has on the bottom rubberized feet so you can set that down on your equipment and it won't mar anything we'll look at the uh, holder here that the um, actual strap would go on to it's metal and you would attach your shorter strap in that fashion okay the battery would load right here take it off push that in pull it out Now this thing is hefty. This is a hefty little unit. But I'll tell you, it's got great balance. The handle is rubberized. Very comfortable in your hand. There's the variable speed. Now you'll notice the light on there. It's got a switch so you can turn it on without the light or if you turn it on the directions say that that'll stay on for 20 seconds so when the unit shuts off the light shuts off after about 20 seconds and uh, when you turn it on again it'll turn itself back on so it's shut off. I've got it turned on. And you can shut it off, obviously, then, like I said. And that light is not meant to be a flashlight. It's just meant to illuminate the area that you're working within. All right, we'll look at some of the components of this. This is the handle area I was talking about. Very comfortable. This is your trigger, trigger switch, which you can lock. 
right there. That act, this little thing is the lock. <coughs> Excuse me. Now that's locked. comes with a very nice on both ends of the hose a spring guard strain relief here's the coupler end it's obviously had grease in it from the factory that goes into your grease zerk And this is your grease tube. And as with your standard hand grease guns, this allows you to pull the rod back so the plunger in there so you can take the cap off put your tube in there or do a bulk load and then just pull this back and let it in okay guys this is a pressure relief valve right here this is on the bottom front of the unit Now that is set at the factory to relieve pressure above 10,000 PSI. If grease is coming out of that pressure relief valve, it's an indication that there's a clog in the fitting, line, or bearing, and uh, any one of those conditions must be uh, taken care of. So if you see grease coming out of there, there's a problem. Now this is a purge valve right here to get air out of your system. See where that hole is right there? You would turn that. That would release the air so that your grease would come out properly and not be uh, locked, air locked. Okay, this is a check valve in there. And again, <clears throat> that's what the manual's for. I'm not going to go through all that. It's always important to read the manual, understand, and uh, as a maintenance thing. Now this is an eighth inch national pipe taper fill port, and it's got a plug in there at the moment. But that's used for bulk loading. If you've got grease in bulk containers, that's the uh, port that you would use. And to do that in the bulk container, page 13 addresses how to do that. I'll just kind of show it here, but import, they do have some important information. So do look at the manual. Alright, before I put grease into this new gun, I thought I'd show old versus new. This is the old way I used to do it. I've got different ends here, different grease fittings that I, different uh, grease circs that I keep on hand when you need them, different fittings in here, grease zerk fittings, different styles in there. Over the years, as you need them, you just know that uh, if you have an issue, you may as well have some on hand. And uh, these are always kind of a pain in the ass. You gotta, you know, you gotta pump them had the pump up here, the handle, and uh, I put an extension on it. Actually, it's got three extensions on it because the one is very short. I ended up putting two more extensions to get it to, and actually, uh, 
it looks like the one on the uh, 12 of uh, the uh, battery operated one uh, is much longer than the uh, the hand operated one here so this will be thrown out I will no longer use that I'm gonna keep all these other fittings but uh, I will get rid of that we're gonna go from the old to the new okay so I'm ready to put some uh, grease in this through the tube when you pull the plunger you definitely want to open the purge valve makes it so much easier so here's what the inside of that grease tube cap looks like So here we're looking down inside the grease tube. Okay, so here you see the grease tube out of the main body of the grease gun. I've got my tube ready to go. So that screws in like that. This will now go in here and go all the way in to there then you will screw that into the uh, grease gun Next thing I'm going to do before I put the plunger in is open up this relief valve. Now that will come all the way out so you don't want to go any further when you look in the hole and you see that that plunger is past that little hole then you can just stop. Okay so let me release the uh, that rod from the back of the cap. I'm going to close this off. I'm going to wipe that up. Okay, so at this point you still want to get that rod back further. So just simply take it and push it down. Then I'm just going to open up this uh, purge valve one more time. A little, little grease out. Close it off again. Just to ensure. So all air should be out of the tube, out of that cartridge. Something else I did here, I found it to be kind of a pain in the ass was this cap. I just pulled it off the end because 
of the coupler here that for the grease cap. What I'm going to do is the same thing I've done with my other one is just take a, a small sandwich bag, place it around the end here when I'm done, wipe it off, put it on the end and then store it in the case. That way if it gets dirty, you know as far as it's too greasy, just put a new uh, sandwich bag on it. Where this you got to screw around and clean it up. And what I'm finding is it's in the way when it was on here. For me it was kind of in the way. So I thought let's just get rid of it. All right, so let's give this a try rather than try to uh, get underneath a vehicle. We usually just to do this like this. And uh, let's see what happens. Something I want to try is to clean this up. I always use lacquer thinner, and I've got some lacquer thinner in a spray bottle. And I want to spray some on a uh, towel, paper towel. And then I'm going to wipe it on the unit and see if it affects it any onto the plastic. Because this is what I will be using. Okay, took that off, but that's no big deal. Took the black off. Because this is what I'll be using to clean up any grease. So at the most, it just took the black off of the housing. But let's take a look at it. And it has not done anything to the surface. So other than take the black off, the surface has not been degraded or damaged because of the lacquer thinner. So if you go to DeWalt's website, then you can actually get product information on this grease gun and if you want to download the instruction manual which is at the bottom or the parts manual which you see at the top exploded art you can do so now for the heck of it I also went to ereplacementparts.com to find information on this grease gun and to see about some some possible cost they've got this interactive system here where you can just click on something here's the motor number 10 if we click on that it brings up the motor assembly gives you the part number and gives you the cost Now let's take a look at this hose. Item 37. That bad boy is $46.91 at least from this particular place, the replacement parts. But I thought I'd just bring that up so that you can get parts for this should uh, something go wrong. And here you see the PDF downloaded from DeWalt. And it'll give you the item number, the part number, and the description, and quantity required. And then here we see the instruction manual that is that I downloaded off the Walt site in a PDF format.
Now this came with a whole bunch of languages, a bunch of pages. I've got the professional PDF maker, so I just took all the other languages out of it and just uh, kept it to the English that I needed.